interesting things happened last month in the Russian automotive industry. I'll start with the main car manufacturer in Russia, the Avtovaz company, whose cars are considered under the Lada brand. Since June, the revived Lada Vesta passenger car has been massively sold throughout the country. Last year, Avtovaz was forced to stop its production, because due to western seizures it could not import part of the components. Now some of the components were other bodies inside Russia, China began to supply. Lada Vesta is offered in sedan and station wagon versions, as well as in their cross modifications with increased ground clearance and a protective plastic body kit. At the former Nissan plant in SD. Petersburg, which has now come under the control of Avtovaz, one of the Chinese crossovers came out instead of the Nissan crossover. These subs are called Lada X Cross 5. While they are produced by SKD, but within two years, welding and painting of car bodies will be mastered. Many Chinese components have been replaced in Russia. In addition, Avtovaz plans to start production of middle-class sedans at this site in 2024. These will be Chinese cars, but under the Lada brand. The Avtovaz company, restored after the sanctions strike, has decided on its plans for 2023. 400,000 vehicles will be manufactured at its plants, about 50,000 of which are planned to be exported. The Solars group of companies in the free economic zone of Yuga has been producing Ford Transit light trucks for several years. At the beginning of this year, after the departure of Ford from Russia, Solars began production at the same plant in the class of trucks of the Chinese company Jack, but under its own name Solars. And in June, Solars reopened the factory that used to produce Ford engines. Now the equipment is being readjusted for production at this plant, most likely the company Jack. But it will not be just assembly, in Russia they plan to produce cast engine parts and carry out their machining. The Russian company Avtodor, located in the city of Kaliningrad, announced the development of its production. It has begun construction of a new foundry and mechanical plant. The leveling of the site for the construction of its building has already begun. In addition, in June, the author at his plant in Kaliningrad came to the production of a new model. This is a Chinese crossover Bayek X55. So far, these cars are being produced in test mode, and the launch of mass production is scheduled for autumn. The second model of the Bayek company, which Avtodor intends to implement in production, is a frame sub called the Bayek BJ40. It is equipped with a 2-liter engine and 225 horsepower. Its mass production will begin on Saturday. In total, the author will master the production of seven Bayek models at his own plant. The Gaz plant, which specializes in the production of light and medium-sized trucks, has begun the development of an extensive program to replace Cummins diesel engines with diesel engines of its own production. These diesels with an actual volume of 2.5 liters received the designation G-Series. They are based on the engine of one of the Chinese brands. But the Gaz company has purchased all the necessary production equipment to fully accommodate this diesel engine. For example, Gaz will carry out independent casting and machining of G-Series diesel components. The first G-Series diesels were the popular Gazel NN and Sobel NN light commercial vehicles in versions with all single wheels. The Ural Automobile Plant, judging by the exposition of its trucks at the Combix exhibition held in May, is intensifying the promotion of Kabova Road trucks. These trucks were previously present in the shadows of the Ural bonneted truck. But the Ural Automobile Plant produces a cab over cab on its own, and buys cabs for bonneted trucks from partners. So the improved Ural Sports truck received a cab, which was taken from cab over models. But, at the same time, the layout of the sports truck is kept bonneted. This sports truck will make its debut in the Silkway Rally. Kamaz has two main news. The first is that back in May, Kamaz manufactured a new generation Kamaz K5 main truck tractor with serial number 1000. The fact is that the production of these tractors was suspended after the outbreak of hostilities, because there were many European-made components in their design. Back in 2022, Kamaz came under very strong Western sanctions, after which the supply of components from Europe stopped. During the year, the company localized some of them, and began to buy some in friendly countries. Thus, it can be argued that mass production of the most modern truck in Russia has now been resumed. The second news is that the line of Compass models, which Kamaz produces from Chinese kits, has been replenished with a truck with a gross weight of 3.5 tons. 
This model differs from the previously put into production compass trucks with a gross weight of 9 and 12 tons in a smaller cab and an engine with a working volume of only 2.2 liters. It develops 122 horsepower. Another important event related to Kamas. On June 14, four autonomous truck tractors Kamas K5 with semi-trailers began to run automatically between the terminals of Moscow and SD. Petersburg. So far, with a test driver in the cab, but already with a commercial load. This is only the first step, but if lawmakers legalize robot trucks, then they will develop very quickly. Transporters need to be convinced of the economic advantages of electric trucks, which is not going well so far. And the advantages of autonomous trucks are clear to carriers. Robots are able to work non-stop 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and are not subject to restrictions related to the observance of the work and rest schedule of drivers. Not surprisingly, one of the largest retail companies in Russia, called Wild Berries, has begun to introduce autonomous trucks. One of its logistics centers has launched test transportation with autonomous electric trucks with a payload capacity of 2 tons, developed by the cargo. Another news about the development of electric trucks in Russia. In June, Concordia offered customers a compact electric utility truck of the second generation. It is technically more advanced and more efficient. The truck is equipped with a 10 kilowatt electric motor and Russian lithium iron phosphate batteries with an energy capacity of 160 ampere hours. Solar panels are mounted on the roof, which save about 10% of electricity. This electric utility truck is capable of running a full shift on a single charge. And at the end of the video, another interesting new special truck. This is the largest Reanimobile in Russia. It was made by order of a large gold mining company from the Far East. The chassis of the Ural Next off-road truck was taken as the basis for this Class C Reanimobile. In addition to medical equipment for resuscitation of patients, this truck is equipped with an independent diesel generator and productive climate equipment which allows it to perform its functions even in remote, sparsely populated regions, of which there are still a lot in Russia.